Thank you, Mr. Todd. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh, not at all. No, I, I got your message via my former secretary in Birmingham, and um, as I now live in London, and I, I made a note of my new address and telephone number. Thank you. Have you managed to trace your wife? No. I'm sorry. And you haven't located the picture? No. We had a meeting of directors yesterday and, well, we had advice that we're in a tricky legal position, Professor. Oh. If we have evidence of fraud having been committed, we have a legal obligation to report it to the police. Oh, no. But, of course, if we were paid for the... Oh, but, but you will be. I'm just waiting for the cheque for my lump sum on retirement. It should be here any time. That's good. But we are advised that we mustn't appear to be demanding the money with menaces, I think, the legal term is. <laughs> you haven't been in the least bit menacing. Well, we're very sorry for it. But we are advised that we cannot wait too long before... But you will have it. Um... In two weeks at the outside, I promise you. Well, that will be all right. But if it should be longer... It, it won't be. I've been in touch with the superannuation people. Good. Well... Hard, I see. I thought you might like some tea. Oh, that's very kind. I am. Um, I hope you don't mind my asking, but uh, the rent. Yes. My tenants usually pay in advance, just a month. Oh. Um. Right. Oh. I wonder if it would be possible if you could pay cash. Well, I'm afraid I don't have enough cash. But, uh, let me see. I could give you... Yes, I could give you a week's rent. That's 30 pounds, isn't it? Yes. Uh, just a minute. And uh, give you the rest later when I've been to the bank. That could be fine. Good. This is going to take longer than I thought. So I borrowed this book from the library to help me, but uh, it's more difficult than it appears in the illustrations. Oh, never mind. Yet your job's worth doing. Yes, quite. And you have made a good job of this. Oh, oh, oh dear. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Head. I really thought... No, no, it, it's my fault. I didn't know it was temporary. No, it's not meant to be. Oh, dear. So I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to manage this myself. I shall have to get a builder in. Oh, nonsense. They'll charge the earth and make no end of a mess. I'll help you. You? Why not? Didn't I fit out the kitchen? What, your kitchen? Yes, every bit. I went to carpentry classes in the evenings. Oh, well, uh, I'd be most grateful if you would. Right. Did you mark the places? Yes, yes, I have. Good. You pour the tea. And I'll drill the holes. Uh. I thought we were coming here to talk. We were. But first things are first. Uh. Where do we start? I thought your father knew about me.
You never said so in so many words. You didn't actually lie, but you did convey that impression. I'm sorry. That's not the point. Why didn't you tell him? Well, I told you, we're not uh, great about the emotional side of our lives. <laughs> Telling your father you've got a girlfriend doesn't seem a big deal to me. So what was difficult was telling him you had a black girlfriend. Come on. You've met him? Did he seem like the district secretary of the National Front? No, he was very polite, very civilised, very English, just like you. Well, there you are then. So why didn't you tell him? It hurt, Simon. Really hurt. <laughs> can't manage more. No, I'm afraid that is the best price I can offer. Look, I've lots of them. Trade is very bad. Yes. All right, I'll take that. Oh, you shouldn't have carried those yourself. Oh, they're heavy. They certainly are. You should have had them delivered all together. Well, yes, but to tell you the truth, Mrs. Heather, they were far more expensive than I bargained for. So I had to go to the bank to get enough money to complete the purchase. This came for you while you were out. Oh. It's addressed to Professor Brett. Oh, it must be from the university. Probably some books I left behind. Are you really a professor? I was. Well, I still am, I suppose, really. Oh. Dear, dear, dear. It's very well packed. Oh, that's beautiful. Guess my secretary sent it. It used to be in my study. I must have forgotten it. It's very nice. We'll have to find a place for it. You've already got one decanter. Oh, no, that one wasn't mine. Excuse me. Ah, Miss Weldon. Hello, Peggy. We have a new guest. Oh, come and meet him. Miss Weldon, this is Professor Brett. How do you do? Professor. Of what? Well, it used to be of English literature, but I've retired now. Looks as though you're working very hard. Well, yes, but I don't know what I'd have done if Mrs. Haddo hadn't proved so skillful with her electric drill. Well, if you'll excuse me, I really must get on. I left a brief here, and I have a lunch appointment. I'll be seeing you. Yes. Such a nice lady. Yes. Works in the solicitor's office in the high street. A full partner she is. Oh, uh, could you put those down there? But they look the same. Well, yes, but uh, they're novels and uh, that's poetry. But they'd look much nicer together. I like to see nice sets of books. Oh, well, I don't suppose it matters for now. Now, that looks good, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Oh, we've all been... Penny, we not talk for long. I just, uh, I just want to say that uh, you're not to worry and not to look for me. But where, where, where are you? You just can't disappear. Well, that's just what I have done. Disappear. When will we see you? I don't know. Um, perhaps not for some time, but tell your father that I'm sorry. 
But I, I couldn't do anything else. Penny, I'm going now. God bless, and don't look for me. Any of you? Oh, Mum, please. <laughs> distracting me. I mean to. Not in the office. We've never had it in the office. No. Perfectly well what I mean. What about dinner tomorrow night? Where? Your place will be nice. And where is Alice going to be? Oh, she's gone away to her mother's. Apparently the old bats hurt her back, so she sent the broomstick down to whisk her away for a few days. It's nice for you. It gives us a chance. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Michael. I can't see you tomorrow. I have a, another appointment. Ah. A rival? Hmm? No. And what if it were? <laughs> I'm not thinking of leaving, Alice. Are you? Hey, you're a bit sharp today. Well, it is pretty hopeless, Michael. What is? Alice. It's just getting me down, that's all. I don't <sighs> like deceit, hiding. I anything. told you from the very beginning, I, I know, told you. I know, we're both as free as air, so I can't accept your invitation to my flat tomorrow. Ah, well, maybe we could, um... Go to the theatre or something, hmm? Hmm? Well, you are jealous. As a matter of fact, Michael, I've um, invited someone else to dinner. Anyone I know? Uh, no. Oh, well. We, um, could make it the day after tomorrow, hmm? Michael, please, I have to finish this conference. All right, all right, all right. I will leave you in peace. <clears throat> And I will see you the day after tomorrow. Yes. And as I said, I'll uh, I'll see. Ciao. Professor, it's for you. Someone called Penny. Oh, yes. Yes, it's my daughter. Thank you very much. Hello, Penny. Dad, Mum rang. Mary, she rang you? Yes. Where is she? Um, she wouldn't say. Oh, she must have. Oh, Dad, just, just let sorry, me tell sorry. you. Sorry, sorry. Go on. She said that she was all right, but that she didn't want to see any of us for some time. And that she was sorry. A bit late for that. But that's all that she could do. <laughs> Marvellous. Well, she said you'd understand eventually. And we're not to look for her. But we have to. Well, I know that. Have you found anything yet? Oh, give me a chance, Penny. I'm, I'm just trying to settle in. Well, you won't just leave it, will you, Dad? <sighs> well, no, but it's very... It's. Very... <sighs> I, I don't know where to start. Penny, try to understand. I'm at my wit's end, trying to live in one room, trying to get a job. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Well, you could try the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army? What, you think some simple lass in a bonnet can hold my hand and cheer me up? No, they've got a missing persons bureau. I hear they're very good. Oh, I see. Well, I'll think about it. Have you told Simon? Uh, yes. He hasn't rung me. 
No, well, I, I told him not to. I know you two. Well, at least she's rung, Dad. Yes, yes, it's a start, I suppose. Do you want me to come down? No, no, not yet. Uh, thank you, Penny. There's nothing for you to do yet. All right, then. Well, do keep in touch, won't you? I will. Good night. I'm not interrupting anything. No. No, I was, I was just watching television. There's nothing on, anyway. Uh, Nikki is out at the library. She shouldn't be long. She'll be uh, pleased to see you. Oh, will she? Yes. You certainly impressed her when she came home. Oh, good. Sit down. Uh, can I offer you something? Some, uh, some wine here. It's just plonk, I'm afraid. Oh, that would be nice. I should have brought something. It's all right. I'm afraid it won't uh, surprise you with its presumption may shock the living daylights out of you for uh, daring to call itself a wine at all. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Actually, we usually use it on our chips. Your mother has rung Penny. But nothing to go on? No. Simon, I want us to work together on this. So I thought perhaps we might talk things out a bit. Oh, dear. If you don't want to. No, no, no. It's, it's just as been my day for talking things out. Nikki was angry that I hadn't told you about her. Well, neither of us has been very forthcoming with each other. No. But I've only recently realised that. Well, consciously realised it. At school, I remember hearing about other boys' parents having rows, splitting up, all that. I couldn't understand it. We always seemed so stable. Yes. But then uh, so did Mount Elena before it blew its top off. <laughs> yes. Before I went to university, what was that, four years ago? We uh, had a holiday in France, do you remember? I spent the time in the sea you looked at um, paintings and buildings. And Mum looked at birds. Remember? Everything seemed so perfect somehow. I just can't understand what happened. You left for university. And she was left with just me, I suppose. And you never noticed anything? Sorry, I'm sorry. We've we've been there before. No, Simon, I didn't notice anything, and you can't blame me more than I do. And I'm being punished. Do you think it's wonderful living in some sleazy bed sitting room? Well, it's a it's a question of expectation. And mine was somewhat different. What's happened about the cottage and rye? 
It's on the market again, and if or when they manage to sell it, I may get some of the deposit back. But I still owe the art gallery, and if I don't pay them soon, they'll approach the university, and I can't have that. I'm sorry, Dad. I, I, I'm not. Tr I'm really not trying to. I know. I know. I know. It's all right. Hi. Good evening. You're the new guy. <laughs> yes. I'm Tina. Oh, my name is is Brett. Edward Brett. Mmm. Sounds good. All right, I'll see you around. <laughs> All right, Lee. Hello, Tina. Hello. Oh, hello. How are you getting on? Oh, uh, f fine. No, uh, Mrs. Haddo's doing all the hard work. <laughs> she is marvellous. But uh, you will have to be careful. She'll take you over completely. Yes, she is somewhat uh, commanding. <laughs> I was wondering if you'd care for a bite of supper tomorrow night. Oh. It won't be anything special, just some cold meat from the deli and some salad. Oh, that's very kind. Nonsense. I know what moving in is like. You probably haven't even thought about food. Uh, eight o'clock, all right? Yes. Right. You just go to the top of the house. Thank you very much. Right. I'll see you then. Good night. Good night. Well, there doesn't seem to be a great deal I can do for you. However, if you'd like to see the address on that notice board just by the door, the Department of Health and Social Security. Thanks. Okay. Can I help you? Well, I don't know, really. Are you looking for work? Well, yes, you see, I've recently retired from university and I find I need to obtain some sort of work. What did you do at the university? Oh, I taught there. Um, I was professor of literature, actually. Oh, well, I think you go to the professional and executive recruitment. Is that here? Oh, no. It's near Piccadilly Circus. You'll find the address and all the particulars you want on that notice board just by the door. Right. Thank you very much. I wanted to write um, academic books and in any case my wife was in very poor health I'm sorry well now I feel I need to work yes many people find retirement isn't all it's been cracked up to be well no but it's not that precisely I actually need to work you have a pension 
Oh, yes, of course. But I lost my wife a, a short time ago. And I found there were considerable debts. So I do need to work, not just to pass the time, you understand. Well, let's come to qualifications. Uh, academic qualifications. Well, let's start there. An MA Cantab, hmm? a PhD, and some honorary doctorates. Do you have any languages? Well, uh, my medieval Italian is reasonable enough to cope with Dante and Petrarch, um, Old English, <laughs> and um, Old Norse. Old Norse? Yes. Yes, I don't suppose that's much use unless you have a job selling long boats to Vikings. No, we don't have a job like that at the moment. <laughs> no modern languages? Uh, well, uh, my French, German and Italian will get me by, I suppose. Enough for, say, commercial translation? I doubt it, no. no. Well, what sort of a job would you be interested in? Well, I thought some sort of administrative job, because uh, I did run a large department for many years. Mm -hmm. Or publishing, I, I thought, because I do have quite a lot of experience in close working on texts. Publishing? Well, that's a very hard field. There are so many people trying to get into it. Yes, I know, yes. Many of my students tried to get in. Yes, of course. Uh, with any success? Oh, yes, some, but uh, not many. Yes. Look, with your qualifications, it would be quite easy to get at least part-time work at a college or university in London. No. No, I'd much rather not. After a lifetime's teaching, uh, I need a change, I think. I see. I do realise it's a very difficult time for employment. It is. Well, let me tell you how we can help you. Now you've registered, you'll get a copy of that every week. There are 35 pages of jobs in there. There's a whole bundle of leaflets and advice. And we organise a seminar. A seminar? That sounds familiar. Every week. It's an introduction to job hunting. Oh, I see. More like a lecture, really, then. No. I mean a seminar. Many of the people who attend have already had experience of job hunting. They make an input. Yes, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just being pedantic. It's a lifetime's habit. Yes. Uh, but it was you who opted to change it. Yes. Yes, good. Well, I'd really like to attend the seminar. When is the next one? We hold them on Thursdays. So, next Thursday, here. Oh, so you imagine it may be quite some time before you manage to find something. Dr. Brett, I think it would be wise if you realised you might have quite a long wait and be prepared to work pretty hard in the meantime. Being unemployed is hard work. Oh, this is Haddo. I'd like you to have these. Oh, you shouldn't. Oh, thank you. And I wanted to ask you how much I owe you for doing the shelves, I mean. Nothing. I told you. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you very much. I was about to make a cup of tea. Oh, well, thank you. Another time. I have to write some letters.
This is a good wine. It should be opened now. Do you mind? Not at all. Thank you. Well, you've made this a very pleasant flat. It's very warm and cosy. <laughs> That's one thing I must have. Heat. Oh, I suffer from the cold. Actually, most of my friends complain about the heat in here. So if you're uncomfortable, take your jacket off. Most people do. Oh, thank you. Yes, I think I will. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. And welcome to 71. Actually, I do feel very welcome. Mrs. Haddo's made a marvellous job of those shelves. She certainly has. She showed them to me. Oh, when I came back at lunchtime, she was just finishing them off. Actually, I bought some flowers to bring to you, but um, when I saw the shelves, I gave them to her instead. Oh, well, that's good. And she'll have been pleased with that. So you've had to settle for the wine. Well, then both Peggy and I did very well out of it. And there is nothing like a good bottle of wine at the end of a hard day. Oh, you've had one of those, have you? Yes, a really nasty problem. Oh. Well, I had this very simple woman in. She'd had a road accident, and she'd been to one of these, you know, church legal clinics, and they'd got her 800 pounds. Well, now, four years later, there are medical problems, and she ought to have got a great deal more. Well, can't you go back to the insurance company? No, unfortunately not. The money was paid in full and final settlement. There should have been an interim payment. She was very badly advised. Oh, dear. And the barrister, who was a young girl, I mean, at the time she'd only just been called to the bar, but my client's only redress is to actually sue her personally. Can she afford to pay? No, of course not. And I checked out the clinic and they're not insured. So what it's going to mean, really, is that I'm actually going to force into bankruptcy a young girl who gave her services freely and out of the goodness of her heart. Mm. It's awful. Yes. But what else can I do? Because my duty is to my client, and she does have a very good case. So unless I'm able to negotiate some kind of settlement, I shall have to advise litigation. It's hard. Mm. It is. I shall have to advise my son's girlfriend not to give free advice. Oh. Is she a lawyer? Studying to be. Oh. Do you have uh, other children? A daughter. She's married to a farmer and lives in the Midlands. And my son, Simon, is a research student in physics. Not a chip off the old block? Not in subject, no, though there are similarities. Does he live in London? Yes, he lives with Nicky. It's a pretty stable relationship, I think, though he was a bit awkward about it. You're not married? Um, I was. It didn't work out. Oh. Mrs. Haddo tells me that you're recently widowed. Yes. When was that? Oh, very recent, really. In fact, almost three weeks. Oh, I'm sorry, so soon. Yes, I, I wanted to get away very quickly. It's all right, I understand. You must have been very close. Oh, yes. Yes, we were. Look, I am sorry. I didn't mean to No, cry. we weren't. I thought we were, but we weren't. Can I tell you, just between us, I've, I've got to tell someone. I'm good at keeping secrets. Yes, of course. My wife didn't die. I told Mrs. Haddo that I'd lost her, and that is literally true. She left me, and I've no idea where she is. Oh. She just left. She must have been very unhappy, and I had no idea. I see. And you blame yourself? Well, with justice, don't you think? Well, you forget I'm a lawyer. I have a fairly jaundiced view of justice. Well, it means something to me. I don't know why I'm burdening you with this. Silly, I'm glad you are. We'll have a much more comfortable dinner if you're not worrying about every word you say in case you spill some dreaded secret. Well, you're very kind. Well, it's rather flattering to be made a confidant. How have your children taken it? My daughter, pretty well, I suppose, but she has a husband and child of her own. My son, very hard. Oh, sons and mothers. Yes, that's right. He blames me, and I think he's quite right to do so, because I deserve it. Oh. 
we all got our desserts, who would escape whipping? <laughs> yes, but Hamlet's was the reverse problem. He was oversensitive. I doubt if Ophelia thought so. But you think you were insensitive? I know I was. No, it's, it's too soon to be that certain. Is that why you've buried yourself here in London? Well, it must have seemed a precipitate flight to everyone where you were, you know, friends, colleagues. I doubt that. if they even noticed. Is that why you retired? No, I'd already decided to retire early. It happened on my last day. Oh. So I was made emeritus professor of literature and a bachelor with no merit whatsoever within an hour. I think I'll pour you another drink. So now I suppose you ought to take it easy for a while. Get away. Why don't you have a holiday? Go abroad. It's not so easy. See, the reason my wife did what she did was that she'd accumulated quite a lot of debts. And uh, so I have to get a job, and it doesn't look as if it's going to be all that easy. Come in. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, you must be Simon and Nicky. Oh, this is a surprise. A woman downstairs said you were up here. Yes, that's right. This is Miss Elizabeth Weldon. We're having a drink. Um, we're going to have dinner. I'm sure it'll stretch to four. Well, you're just on our way to the pictures. We thought we'd just uh, drop in. Oh, well, stay and have a drink anyway. Um, with some wine, do you? Uh, yes. Hmm? That'll be fine. I um, thought you said you were living in a bedsitter. <laughs> no, this isn't my flat. This is Miss Weldon's. Ah. Miss Weldon, um, we won't stay for a drink. We uh, really were on our way to the pictures. Oh. Good night. Good night. Good night. Excuse me a moment. Simon, my room is, is just there. Would you like to see it? Good night, dear. Somebody loves you? It's from the university, my lump sum on retirement. With a cheque like that, who needs love? If only it were mine. It's paid to you. But I have to pass it on, my wife's debts. What, all of it? Afraid so. It won't be in my account for five minutes. Excuse me. I know it's none of my business, Edward, but have you sought legal advice about these debts? Yes, I did. But this is to pay for the picture I told you about last night. Well, that's one debt you're not responsible for. I mean, that was a criminal offence. Straight fraud. You are not responsible. Not legally responsible. It's an awful lot of money to pay to prove that you're morally responsible. Yes. But the alternative is police trial, and I can't have that. Well, I think you should think about it. I've done little else. Well, as I said... Nothing to do with me. I must be going. Bye. Goodbye. Sorry, uh, it's something I've forgotten.
Hello? Gerald? No. It's me. I want to talk to you. What's the matter? What's happened? Um, I didn't want to tell you, but I... Uh... Uh, take your time. Sit down. Have some coffee. No, Jane, don't stop me. If I don't tell you now, all at once I won't at all. You know, after Tony and Phil and all that, when I... We didn't see each other because Gerald had found out. Yes? Well, I kept on coming to London. You kept on with Tony? Uh, yes, for a while. I got more and more into um, gambling. I spent all our, our money. Edward's. And, and mine. What did he say? Uh, he never knew. All of the money? Yes, yes, everything. And um, there was something else I, I don't want to go into. But he must have found out by now. Oh, yes, but uh, that's why I left. Thought of killing myself. Perhaps I should have done. Oh, no. Well, I, I didn't have the courage. I just ran. Mary. And then this morning I found myself in an amusement arcade. And uh, it's still there, the, the gambling. I'd, I'd stopped. I stopped. I really did, but uh, I, I don't know what to do. Um... Tuesdays, 11.30. Okay, thank you. The PER people said I should register for benefit. The P45? P45. Yes, you were given a tax statement when you left your last employment. It's called a P45. Oh, I see. Uh, I don't recall being given anything. Okay. Where were you working? I was teaching at university. Uh -huh. Temporary job, was it? No, I was there 30 years. When did you leave? Well, it would be July the 7th. And when did your employment end? Well, July the 7th. Oh, I, yes, sorry, sorry, I see. Yes, how foolish of me. It was officially the end of August or maybe September. And you will be paid for that time? Yes, yes, how silly of me. Yes, they paid me at the end of July, but that included the money up to the end of the summer. Back. So sorry to have troubled you. But you'll have to see him sooner or later. Why? Well, there must be so much to settle. Arrange. Oh, he'd have done all that by now. Who is he? What did Penny say? Um, nothing much. Don't let's talk about it. Mary, you have to make plans. My whole life so far has been full of plans. Edward's career, children's education, cottage and ride. Yes, I wonder how Edward's settling in there. I don't know, perhaps he never went. Didn't Penny say? When you rang her? Huh? I didn't want to talk about Edward. Mary, it's been wonderful having you here. Gerald wants me out. Now, please, don't be like that. You did say you were going to stay for a few days, and that's what I told Gerald. And he said that as his mother is coming in a week's time. Oh, so you want me out in a week? Well, if you could make other arrangements. I'm sorry, I haven't made it very easy for you, have I? Nonsense. It's true. Um, Jane, I've been most grateful for you putting me up. But I've enjoyed it. It has been difficult, though, hasn't it, with Gerald? Well, it hasn't been easy since, well, since he found out about... Um, had a little fling with Tony and Philip. I don't know about you, but mine wasn't really a fling, more a pathetic little step. My God, I've come a long way since then. And you won't go back? To Edward? Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. Why, it's over, Jane, dead. If you wanted me to, I'd see him for you. No. 
No, you mustn't. You promise. All right, all right. Uh, I'm sorry, but I, I don't want him to know where I am. I really don't. Is there something you haven't told me? Like what? Well, I don't know, but you seem so vehement, as if you're frightened of something. Frightened? Oh, don't be so silly. Of course, I'm not frightened of it, but I just want to make a clean break, that's all. Anyway, don't worry. I'll find somewhere else. Thank you.